Hey everyone. I went to the Philippines pretty recently for vacation and I wasn't planning on posting any videos about it. But when I got there, I noticed there were so many environmental aspects that are different from that of the United States. Essentially, I want to compare the differences that I noticed while there in the Philippines to what I've been experiencing in the United States. Now, I don't want to bully the Philippines or any one country and say that like this is the right way on how to run a country. If anything, I'm happy to see the differences and see where there can be room for improvement from both ends. So throughout the rest of the video, you'll just be hearing a voiceover of me with all the videos that I've captured, explaining the major environmental categories that I think has room for improvement, or at least the major differences that I noticed between the two countries. Okay, so let's get started. I'm recording on my phone, so the audio might be different from what you're used to hearing on the camera. First is the general climate. So I'm going to be honest, it's hot, humid. I'm so used to the cozy, like 60 to 80 degrees Fahrenheit or like, you know, 20 to 25 degrees Celsius. So when I got out of the airport that day, like, man, I was dead. It was a consistent, like 90 degrees Fahrenheit every single day, not one degree hotter or one degree colder. The humidity was like a thousand percent and I could sweat just by standing there. Because it's so uncomfortably hot and humid, people turn on the air conditioning. And you know, that's understandable. But everyone turns on the air conditioning, like everywhere. The cars, the malls, the stores, you know, their bedrooms. Everyone who can afford it or anyone who has an air condition will turn it on. And that means that's a lot of electricity. So fuel is already expensive. So if you're sitting in the car and have the air conditioning on, you know, that's burning the fuel at a quicker rate than if the air conditioner were off. And you know, it takes a lot of electricity to cool a building. The Philippines has a lot of malls and I didn't know any of that before going in. So just imagine how much electricity it takes to cool that large mall in a climate that rarely ever changes temperature. So it's probably on like 24 seven. And I can't imagine that electricity bill. And I did do some research that about two thirds of the energy production in the Philippines comes from fossil fuels. So you can imagine how much that would affect climate change. But relatively speaking, compared to the United States, you know, we're just as bad. I don't want to be too political, but next is socioeconomic disparity. You can clearly see who is low income and who is well off. It's a sad reality when I see a beautiful looking hotel or mall and right across the street are slums and shacks that people live in. I don't know what the government is spending their money on, but it's definitely not on the people. I feel like they're trying to make the Philippines like the United States by promoting consumerism. But if every person on earth tried to live like the United States, we wouldn't have enough resources to support that. In general, the United States is just too resource intensive and greedy. It's downright sad to see people in the United States living the good, comfortable life while somewhere else across the world is someone struggling because they just don't have enough resources. Of course, that was just a general statement. And I know there are people in the United States who aren't as fortunate either, but you know, on average, if you're in the United States, you have a much easier or can acquire help from government sponsored programs compared to other countries. Next is the food. I'm pretty surprised because in Manila, at least, it is as diverse as California. We have all types of foods. You can have like American food, Japanese, Korean, and Filipino food all in like one corner of the mall. Oddly enough, the best food that I've had in the Philippines was actually pizza. And yeah, I've tried all types of food there. like going from chicken intestines on the street to the high-end quality foods in the restaurant. But the thing that stood out the most was actually the pizza. Anyway, back to the environmental aspect of food. I've noticed that most of the traditional Filipino cuisine has a lot of meat, like mostly pork. There aren't many vegetables and has, you know, just way too much meat. Of course, it all depends on the individual and if they are willing to go out of their way to order the types of food. But the majority of the affordable food doesn't include vegetables in them. It's usually just like rice with some sort of meat. So this is a problem because in the United States at least, meat consumption is a huge contributor to climate change and just raising meat uses a lot of resources and releases a lot of greenhouse gases than if you were to grow vegetables, for example. So the same concept applies in the Philippines. If you have to raise a lot of meat just because that's your normal diet, then you probably will be contributing a lot more to greenhouse gases and climate change. Next is the vehicles in the Philippines. I noticed that a lot of the cars there are just really, really old. You can visibly see the smoke come out of the exhaust pipe. So they're probably just not using catalytic converters or they don't have like smog checks. That means the way their cars convert the fuel into mechanical motion is just not efficient. It's worrisome because all of that smoke that goes out of the exhaust pipe goes out into the air that people breathe. People on the street, you know, just walking nearby, that's what they breathe. 
So that's a health hazard, and I feel like I'm just getting lung cancer when I'm walking down the street. So for example, their public transportation uses vehicles called Jeeps, and like it looks as bad as driving a lawnmower. It's very loud and very, very dirty. For the most part, I'll say like this is the biggest thing that the Philippines can improve on. If not for like the environment, at least do it for the air quality and the health of its people. Lastly is traffic. So this goes in hand with the previous point with its vehicles. The roads there are pretty small, so traffic is common. Surprisingly, there aren't many accidents, and I don't know how they can maneuver those small corners, but you know, they do it flawlessly. But anyway, these old vehicles are always spaced bumper to bumper on the roads. Like there's rarely ever a case where they go faster than like 60 miles per hour, unless they're like on an open highway and there's like no one there, but you know, that rarely ever happens. Just going bumper to bumper is not efficient gas usage. So you're never gonna get like 30 miles per gallon as you would here in the United States if you're driving on the highway. You're getting like maybe 10 miles per gallon or maybe even less if all you do is speed up just to go 10 feet and then stop in the next two seconds. So imagine that and pair that up with the old dirty smoke coming out of the exhaust for every single car that you see in the road and you can tell that there's gonna be some major air quality and health problems. Okay, I think I've said enough bad things about the Philippines. You know, sorry if you're in the Philippines and are offended. It's not your fault. You can't control the country and I'm not blaming you. But now let's talk about the positives so it's not all doom and gloom here. The first positive is that the Philippines doesn't have as big of a population as the United States. So they aren't able to produce as many bad things compared to the United States. Next, at least with the family that I stayed with, is that they don't produce that much waste. They are very efficient in what they use and they don't waste any food at all. Maybe because they couldn't afford to waste what they already have, but you know, that's a good thing. They are consciously, or at least forced, if they are maybe poor, to be efficient with the resources. Lastly, although the weather was hot and humid and sticky, the constant rain always cleans the air. And that's what I've noticed as I've walked down the street and lived there. Normally, for example, in downtown Los Angeles, the smoke would stay floating in the air and you'd see the orange hue from the smog. But in the Philippines, it's really clear. It rains constantly, so the dirty air would just fall to the floor. Despite all those dirty vehicles driving around, when I walk down the street, I don't smell too much of the smoke, I only see it. It's only when I'm like directly in front of the vehicle, at that source, do I smell it. You know, it's just weird how the gas dissipates. All right, and that's all I have for the video. Again, this is just a quick vacation. I didn't plan on posting anything for my trip until I realized how different it was from the United States. I know I really just roasted the Philippines with its environmental problems. Maybe I'm just a spoiled US brat that's like used to the good life. Let me know how it is in your country and what you'd like to see improve, or maybe even comment below and let me know what country I should visit next. Just a warning though, I'm probably just gonna be complaining a lot if I ever do decide to go to a different country because I just have like American standards now. Again, I know it's not your fault, it's the country and the government and what the people decide to do. So I just do like to see which country is maybe doing better than others and then trying to see if they can mimic what other countries are doing, you know, the right countries doing the right things. But I know even in America, we're not all that good either. I'm pretty sure someone in like Europe, there will probably be better things that I could roast America about. Okay, so again, that's all I have for the video. See you in the next one. Goodbye.